A question I get a lot on my video about seasonal affective disorder lights or happy lights is whether these lights will help you synthesize vitamin D. The short answer is no. These lights tend to not produce UVB light, which is necessary to synthesize vitamin D. In this video, I'm going to touch on the science of sunlight and vitamin D, something that's important at any time, but is especially difficult to pull off in the winter. I'll show you exactly why sad lights don't work for this and what you can do instead. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Greg Getter, and for the past 10 years, I've been working in lighting research and developing products for light and health. Although my specific area of concern is about the circadian rhythm and how blue light affects sleep and wakefulness, UV is a topic that I am familiar with, and quite frankly, it's something that's not addressed frequently enough by the lighting industry. I think part of that is due to wild speculation and differences of opinion about UV light in general, and I don't really want to get into that here. I just want to focus on the specific mechanism of UV light and synthesis of vitamin D in the skin. So let's dive right into the science. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that can be obtained from food sources, and it can also be synthesized by exposing yourself to sunlight. Vitamin D is important for many things, the main one being the absorption of calcium to help build strong bones. It's also helpful for muscles, the nervous system, and the immune system. Yet, with our largely indoor lifestyles, vitamin D deficiency is incredibly common. Estimates vary, but I saw numbers ranging from about 1 billion people all the way up to 50% of the world's population being vitamin D deficient. And that problem becomes even worse in the winter months, especially as you move far away from the equator. It's difficult to go outside for enough time in the winter, and the UV index is lower anyway in most places, so our propensity to have vitamin D deficiency goes up. People take supplements, but there does seem to be a risk of taking too much. Meanwhile, it's very hard to overdose if you get your vitamin D from sunlight or non-fortified food sources. Because sad therapy lights are commonly used in the winter to help with circadian rhythm regulation, people also tend to wonder whether they can help with producing UV, which would help your body synthesize vitamin D. Here's why sad therapy lights or happy lights are not going to help with that. UVB light, the light that's responsible for vitamin D production, has a wavelength range between 280 nanometers and 315 nanometers. Meanwhile, visible light, the light that we can actually see with our eyes, has a range from about 400 nanometers, or violet light, up to about 700 nanometers, or red light. Indoor lighting is optimized for this visible range because if we tried to provide non-visible light, we would be wasting energy. This is the main reason that incandescent light bulbs are so inefficient because they actually provide more infrared light, or light above 700 nanometers, which is heat, than they do provide visible light. More heat than visible light means that you're gonna have a very inefficient light source. And the same thing would happen with UV light. So let's look at the spectrum or spectral power distribution of a sad therapy light. These tend to use cool white LEDs nowadays, and this is a very typical cool white LED spectrum right here. You can see that the spectrum starts with a blue peak around 450 nanometers. And then as you go above that, you have most of the other visible colors of light. But below that spike at 450 nanometers, there's nothing. So LED sad therapy lights tend not to produce any light below about 450 nanometers, and they are way far off from the UVB range. So they're not gonna help you with your vitamin D synthesis. What about fluorescence though? It turns out that fluorescent lights tend to produce a very small amount of UVB light. However, it's not really significant enough to produce a significant quantity of vitamin D in the body. Now you may be wondering about tanning beds and the specific LED and fluorescent lights that are designed to produce UV light. And my answer there is I would be very careful with these. There are known and unknown risks to using specific UV lights, and you're better off going with something else. So I hope you can see that trying to use artificial light sources to stimulate vitamin D production in the body is going to be difficult or even impossible. Now there are some things you can do, and I'll get into that in a minute. But first, I wanna introduce another light therapy product that I think you might be interested in, and it's one that I developed with my team. 
Bedtime bulb is the light bulb for healthy sleep. It's a light bulb that you use in the last one to three hours of the day before you go to sleep, and it reduces blue light. Blue light is the mechanism by which sad therapy lights work. You want to get blue light in the morning and afternoon as this stimulates the circadian rhythm and tells the body that it's daytime. But at nighttime, if you get blue light inputs from a sad therapy light or regular lighting or the screens on your laptop, your phone, and your computer, those are going to disrupt the circadian rhythm, destroying your sleep, and ultimately making you wake up later and go to sleep later. So that's not good. But what you can do to help is get a product like Bedtime Bulb. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is replace the light bulbs that you would use in the evening before you go to bed. And you just use the product in the last one to three hours of the day. Bedtime Bulb reduces the blue light that's gonna disrupt the circadian rhythm, promoting better sleep and overall circadian rhythm regularity. Bedtime Bulb is the top selling sleep light bulb in the US and Canada. And it's available both on our website, bedtimebulb.com, and on Amazon. I think you'll love it if you give it a shot. The sad therapy lights aren't going to help you synthesize enough vitamin D in the winter, but there are some things that you can do. The first one would be to try to get outside. Even though there's less UVB light in the winter than there tends to be in the summer, there may be enough to be sufficient for your needs. That's going to depend on a few things though. First, your skin color determines how much time you need to spend outside to synthesize enough vitamin D. If you have lighter colored skin, the typical recommendation is 15 to 20 minutes outside. But if you have darker skin, you may need to stay outside a little bit or even much longer to synthesize the same amount of vitamin D. And it will be easier to get more UVB if you're in a sunnier place or at a higher altitude. But be careful because you're more likely to get a sunburn the longer you stay out. So there's this axis of your skin color, the time you stay out, and where you're located that determines how much you need to stay outside to get enough UVB to synthesize vitamin D in the winter. Of course, the winter can be quite cold, and many of us don't want to or can't stay out long enough to get enough UVB that would help us synthesize a sufficient amount of vitamin D. That's where dietary sources of vitamin D come into play. The best dietary sources of vitamin D appear to come from fatty fish, such as sardines or mackerel, or high quality fish oils. You may also be able to get some vitamin D from liver, mushrooms, egg yolks, and cheese. And of course, you can take vitamin D supplements or eat or drink fortified foods, such as milk. But you have to be careful with this because you can overdose on the amount of vitamin D you get. In summary, using sad lamps is not going to help you with your vitamin D needs. Instead, the best way to go about this is to go outside or to eat vitamin D rich foods. With that said, I want to say thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.